Hello, I would like to welcome you to lecture 17 of 3NO3. Uh, we'll start discussing in this lecture um, the common source amplifier configuration for JFETs and MOSFETs. Uh, and I'll give you one example on that. Uh, this this uh, type of amplifiers will be will uh, make use of our uh, techniques or techniques we learned so far in biasing transistors. So you'll see why we need to set a certain bias point for the transistor in order to get a, a certain gain. Okay, there are so many uh, amplifier configurations we can find in, um, in textbooks and, and papers and so on. Um, one of them, it's, it's, you can find a similar configuration for MOSFETs, you can find a similar configuration for bipolar junction transistors. It's, a common, it's called the common source uh, amplifier. And here I'm talking about common source JFET amplifier because this is an n-channel JFET. Okay, um, so this is this is an ampli this is an amplifier. You apply a weak signal here at the input, and you get a much stronger amplified version of that signal at the output. Okay, the way it works is very simple. Um, we have these three transistors, this this transistor here C1, C2, and C3. We have first to understand what is the purpose of these transistors. For DC, for when you are talking about DC, no alternating current, no we, no uh, no signal like this one. Um, so uh, these all these capacitors will represent really open circuit. So the circuit is simply a, a, a voltage source connected to a resistor. You have your uh, transistor, you have a resistor connected to ground, and then you have a resistance connecting the gate to ground. That's it. So a DC. This, this is how we determine the bias the bias of that transistor, the operating point of that, of that transistor, okay? Once we have done that, this, uh, if, we, if we start now to talk about how a signal gets amplified, at the frequency or band of frequencies of this signal, we select these three transistors to have negligible impedance. For example, the impedance represented by this one can be minus J1 ohm, something like that, very small amount, very small number and for, for practically we consider this to be short circuit. So this means that the signal is effectively being applied, the AC signal is effectively being applied directly to the gate. Okay, so uh, this is very important to understand. There are frequencies, different frequencies. We have DC, DC is, a, is, a, is, a, is one of these frequencies. It's simply zero frequency and this is how we determine the bias. Other frequencies are the, the within the band of frequencies of the signal are applied directly to the gate. So this for AC analysis, when we try to calculate the gain, we'll make this one to short circuit, this is called the coupling capacitor, and this is what couples the input signal to the gate. This one is called the coupling capacitor, it couples the output signal from the drain to the load. We have some load here, this can be a loudspeaker or it can be some other load. This one here is called the bypass capacitor, because it's simply at, at AC, when we talk about the, sig the frequencies of this signal, this one shorts out this resistance here. So for AC analysis or for small signal analysis, we use both in the, to mean the same thing here. The source is effectively connected to ground. Because this point here becomes a ground due to the short circuit of this capacitor. The value of this capacitor is selected such that at the frequency or band of frequency of the input signal, it effectively represents very low impedance. Okay, but at DC, it represents very high impedance. So all these three capacitors open circuit for DC, they are short circuit for AC. Now, why do you call it common source? Very simple, because for AC, the signal is applied directly to the gate, while the source is ground. And the output is taken between the drain, this is the drain, and this is ground, which is also the source. So the source is common because we apply the signal between the gate and the source, and we take the output from the drain and the source. So the source here becomes grounded because this capacitor is effectively short circuit. Now for this stage, I have a typo here, and I intentionally left that typo. I didn't want to fix it. The gain here is effectively negative. It is not really GMRD. It is minus GMRD. So as a magnitude, the signal will be amplified by this ratio, but there is a phase inversion. There is a phase inversion. And the reason for that is, I tried to explain this before in, my, in the lecture, 
The reason for that is that if you have an AC signal, if you take the rising side of the AC signal here on this side, so the, this voltage is going up, it's increasing. So the gate voltage is increasing relative to ground, which is relative to the source. Remember, for AC, the source is grounded, okay? So when VGS increases, this means that the drain current flowing from drain to source, according to the situation expression we have, um, this one here will also increase. So the drain current increase. But when the drain current increases, the drain voltage will have to go down. You can see the drain voltage have to go down. The reason for that is that here the drain voltage is simply equal to VDD minus IDS multiplied by RD. So when IDS increases, then this drop will go down. So at this signal is weak and it's going up, this signal becomes strong and it's going down. Okay, so this is why if you have a signal like this one at the input, it's a weak signal. Okay, this is what you're going to be getting at the output. A much stronger amplified version, but with a phase shift to 180 degrees. So there are so many configurations of these, of these amplifiers. This configuration is called the common source. I will show you an example, a detailed example, on how to drive the, this expression for the, uh, for the gain. But if you see this source in, in, in any other example, and you know that this indeed a JFET transistor is a common source configuration, you don't have to drive this from scratch again. You can simply use this, this expression directly, okay? So unless I ask you to drive the expression for the gain, you don't have to do that. Now, later we're going to be talking about common emitter amplifier when we talk about BJ transistors, and we'll get to that very soon. I want, I just what I want to mention here is that B, uh, field effect transistors are preferable uh, because the looking into the gate, you see effectively open circuit. You see very high uh, input resistance. Um, and uh, the gain, but the gain, of course, here will be weaker than the common emitter amplifier, but the common emitter amplifier does not give the same high input resistance. So every type of transistor will give will have its own, its own advantages and its own disadvantages. Okay, let's see how things uh, work out here. Um, as I said, for AC analysis, once you have determined the bias point, then you have selected how small changes in VGS will determine the corresponding changes in IDS. This is simply coming from the uh, expression for the, uh, for the current that we agreed uh, that follows the relationship here between VGS and IDS. This is the expression for them, and I mentioned to you in the lecture that the book of Floyd assumes that we always work in saturation. So if your operating point is here, if your operating point is at this point here, so I can simply draw a line, this is, this is my VGS and this is the corresponding IDS. So a small fluctuations in, in VGS will result in small fluctuations, corresponding small fluctuations in IDS. Okay? So here... Um, and this is this fluctuation IDS results in fluctuations in the voltage here because the voltage here relative to ground in AC is simply equal to VDD minus RD multiplied by this current. And uh, because of this change, because of the ratio between this change and this change, we get amplification. If you remember, we talked about this ratio. We said that the delta IDS uh, to delta VGS, this is what we call the transconductance. So we have to determine the transconductance, and the transconductance is determined by the DC operating point. This is why when we analyze a circuit like this one, the first thing to do is to determine the operating point. Once you have determined the operating point, then we know what is GM, and in that case we move to determine the corresponding uh, output voltage. Now here you can see when VGS increases, when VGS goes up and down like this one, the, the current will also go up and down, IDS will also go up and down, and VDS will also be an amplified version of VDS, but with a negative sign, because of this relationship that VDS in AC is equal to VDD minus R, R, IDS multiplied by RD. So I, when I look at a circuit like this one, I, I look at it from two different ways. The DC part, these capacitors are open circuit, and the AC part, these capacitors are short circuit. Now, 
uh, when we analyze the circuits, usually they try to separate the DC and the AC. So once you have determined the operating point, they build a small another uh, DC circuit, another AC circuit. For example, you can see here, this is this is your VDS at the operating point, but VDS will oscillate around the operating point. The same thing is happening for VGS. Here, VGS, you can see there is no current flowing into the gate and the and the the, the source will have some value here then well there will be some value of vgs we call it vgs q so if, because of, because you apply this ac signal you are summing this ac signal on top of the dc signal to get the total signal and in that case this is the total voltage you're going to be getting at the gate it is the sum of the ac signal and the dc signal so when they analyze such a circuit they say, okay, why don't we separate the DC and the AC? So once we have determined, we have done the DC bias part, they build, they build what's called an, an AC circuit. So for this one, this is how it's going to look like. I will replace VDD by a gra ground, and then the transistor, this is how the transistor will look like. So you could see here, this is RL. Okay, and this is, this is a gate here. And the VG is still there, okay, VG is still there, we did not go away, okay, it's grounded. This is RG, sorry, RG here, and you have this VN. Okay, okay. so in this circuit, as you could see what I did, I removed all the DC voltages. This DC bias was removed. I have only an AC signal at the input, which will result in, as an AC signal at the output. But here I will replace, I have to replace by this transistor by its corresponding ACC, AC model. This AC model relates the small changes happening in VGS to the small change, changes happening in IDS. It is a, linear, a linearized model of the transistor. Okay, so now we, there are three steps. First one, do a DC analysis, remove all these capacitors or open circuit. So just the resistor, another resistor to ground, resistor, find the, bi find, find the operating point. Once we have found the operating point, we have found VGSQ, we have found VDSQ, we have found IDSQ, find the gain. Once you have found the gain, now we remove the DS part, we separate the DS part. Now we are trying to apply superposition. We are not really analyzing DC and the AC together, but rather we'll apply, we already applied DC, now let's analyze only for AC. And then I build this circuit that you see here. This circuit is an AC circuit, there is no DC part, but I will replace the transistor by its equivalent model that relates small changes in VGS to small changes in IDS. This is called a small signal operating model of the transistor. And every transistor will have its small signal um, equivalent model. Again, this figure helps you understand what's happening. Um, this, is, this is VGS, IDS versus, versus VGS. And sometimes, as I said, we call it ID or IDS. It does not really matter. It's the current flowing from the drain to the source. Um, and you can see here, this is my operating point. This is, I, I selected the resistances and the voltage source to have this operating point. So this would be when there is no AC signal applied, this is VGS and this is the corresponding IDS. Now, when I apply an AC signal, I cause small changes around the operating points. You can see here VGS goes down and then at this part VGS increases, okay? So it oscillates around this value. These oscillations in VGS, because we know that IDS is, is related to VGS through a quadratic relationship, will cause oscillations with the same phase in IDS. So you can see, here, when, when VGS goes down, okay, you have IDS will drop as well. When VGS increases, becomes a little bit more in the, towards the positive side, IDS will also increase. Okay? Now, this increase in IDS, what does it do? Well, this increase in IDS will result in a, in a change in our operating point. This is, this, these are the characteristic equations of uh, characteristic curves of my transistor. We said we can we can drive them for any transistor through experiments. Okay, this one here is called the load line, um, the load line of the amplifier. For the previous amplifier, I've shown you, you can simply say that uh, VDD is equal to um, ID multiplied by RD 
plus I D multiplied by R source, the resistance connected to the source. This is a, uh, this is a load line relationship. Uh, actually, I should correct this one here. There is a missing, of course, we're missing uh, VDS. So I have to say here plus VDS. So the circuit actually looks something like this. So we can draw it here. There's a resistance here. There is, there is, this is your transistor. And there is another resistance here, okay? And this is your gate. So IDS flows this way. Okay, and this is VDD. And the voltage between here and here is what we call VDS. This is VDS here. You can see? This is VDS. So I can simply say that VDD is equal to IDRD plus ID, ID multiplied by RS plus VDS. This is called a load line relationship because it relates ID and VDS. We can draw it in the ID VDS curve. So when VDS is equal to zero, I can find ID. ID is simply ID VDD divided by RD plus RS. And if ID is equal to zero, VDS will be equal to VDD. So this gives you this point here. So you can draw this line. So this is an equation that has to be satisfied by IDS and VDS. So our operating point is the intersection of this load line and our characteristic. One of these characteristics depending on VGS. So there will be only one operating point for VGS, so this one here. So when you make IDS oscillate around its nominal value, you are also making, you can see as IDS increases, okay, as IDS increases, this will cause drop in the value of VGS, of VDS. And when IDS decreases, this causes an increase in the value of VDS around the operating point VDSQ. Okay, so this is why we have a phase shift. It's because our, our operating point is determined by the intersection of this line with the, with the curve representing our value of VGS. And this is what we actually did in one of the lectures when we solved the quadratic equation. So when IDS starts to oscillate, it goes up and down. You get, you get the, the drain to source of voltage also oscillating, but with 180 degrees phase shift. So this, this one here will be an amplified version of the voltage VGSQ, but with a, a, with a phase inversion. This is um, a small signal model of a transistor. This, does, this actually is not an, an any channel transistor here. It's one transistor, and every transistor will have its own equivalent model. This simply tells you if there is a small change in the voltage between VGS what would be the change happening between VDS? So this tells you, okay, I can represent that change by this current source. It re transconductance effectively represents a current source. So at a small change here, say if one millivolt, will result in a current flowing from the source to the drain of value GM multiplied by this one millivolt. This resistance here is the input resistance, and this one here is, is very high. For FET transistors, we can take this one to be infinite. This one is the output resistance. Um, and this one, uh, we usually consider this one, uh, ignore this one as well. Uh, we can calculate it. But we remember uh, when I talked about the characteristics of the transistor, I assumed that in saturation, the, I assumed that this line is horizontal. Okay, This, is, this one here is the relationship between uh, VDS and IDS. Okay, so this means that when IDS increases in this, when IDS, when VDS increases in this part or decreases, IDS does not change. Okay, uh, so uh, I mean for the same VGS, for the same VGS, because the output resistance relates VDS to IDS when VGS does not change. But if VGS does not change, then we are on the same curve line. We did not go to another curve line. And in that case, IDS does not change it with VDS. And then this one here, usually, we, we don't take it into account. But in reality, in reality, and the book of Floyd does not get into that, there is usually some slope here. There is some tiny slope. And we can integrate that into, into our equation. And in that case, this resistance will have a value. But what I'm trying to tell you, regardless of that, remember that every transistor will have its equivalent small signal model. This relates small changes in VGS
to small changes in IDS. And this is what we use in our AC circuit to determine the gain. Okay, enough of theory. Let's now have a practical example. And I will walk you through a full example from start to end to see how things go. So here we have, uh, this is a transistor here. It, it's connected to a source 12 volts. Uh, RD is 27K. We have RS. Uh, we have this resistance here. Um, and then we have this um, uh, this one here. This, we have these three capacitors here. And this capacitor, we assume that they are in the operating frequency. They are simply um, uh, of the operating of this signal here. They are short circuit, but for DC, they are open circuit. Uh, we have a load resistance 400K, okay? And we have an input resistance of this AC source of 1K. So we'd like to determine the gain. If I apply a small signal here, say if 1 millivolt, what I'm going to be getting here at the output across this load? This is, I can put in here plus or minus. I'm telling you this is the output voltage. So these are the steps we are going to be doing. First, we do a DC analysis. We have to determine the operating point. We have to determine at which point on the curve you are. We have to determine what is VGS. We have to determine what is IDS. We have to determine VDS at the operating point. Once we have determined that, we can determine, of course, GM. And then we can move to build a, another AC circuit. AC circuit, in the AC circuit, we, 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 we already get rid of the DC part. So this now becomes open, short, this becomes ground, this capacitor becomes short circuit, this capacitor short circuit, this capacitor short circuit. And then we analyze the new circuit by replacing the transistor by its small signal model. So we say that this transistor, we are now trying to find how small changes in VGS relates to small changes in IDS. Okay, so for this transistor, we are giving that IDS is 1 milliampere and VGS of is, one, is minus 1 volt. And we can see from this symbol that this is an N-channel JFET transistor. So this transistor has its own small signal model. Okay, first we do our DC analysis. You can see for the DC analysis, all capacitors are open circuit. So this part is disconnected, this part is disconnected, this one is open circuit. So this is really my circuit. There is no current, no current flowing into the gate. And here um, we know that the gate voltage relative to ground is zero because there is no drop across this resistance. Then VG is equal to zero. We need to determine the um, the uh, the source voltage and the drain voltage. And of course, no one should say that the source voltage is zero because there is a current flowing from the drain to the source, and this current will make the the source voltage higher than ground because there is a drop across this. RS, which is equal to 2 kilo ohm. This wasn't shown in the first slide. This value here of RS 2 kilo ohm. Now, we have, as I, as I did in one of the tutorials, you have to solve, you have to apply Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law and solve them uh, and integrate into the solution the equations governing this transistor. This is the equation governing the transistor in saturation. IDS is equal to IDSS multiplied by 1 minus VGS or VGS of squared. It's a square relationship relating uh, IDS and VDSs. We know what is VG. We can replace VGS by VG minus V source. And V source is simply IDSs multiplied by 2K. So I can, I can from this equation, eliminate IDSs. So I can replace, I replace IDSs. Uh, I know that v, I can see VGS is, is 0 minus V source, and V source is simply 2K multiplied by IDSS. So I can simply find the relationship between IDS, sorry, IDS and VGS. Okay, so here VG is 0, VS is equal to 2 kilo ohm multiplied by IDS. It is this drop here. This is the source voltage. Then I know that VGS is simply equal to uh, minus 2 kilo ohm multiplied by IDS, or IDS is equal to minus VGS divided by 2 kilo ohm. So I can substitute for that here and then solve for VGS. So this is exactly what I have done. I got rid of IDS. I substituted in terms of VGS. So it's minus VGS over 2K. We have this relationship here. IDS is, 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 two, is 2 milliampere. Uh, so this uh, is actually 1 milliampere. So this will cancel out with this one. 10 to the power 3 will cancel, 10 to the minus 3 will give you here minus 2. You can expand this curve, uh, bracket here and then 
combine all the terms, you end up with this quadratic relationship, which will give you two numbers. Either VGS is equal to minus one half or VGS is equal to minus two volts. For this transistor, you were given that the off voltage is minus one volt. Then, for VGS less than minus one volt, the transistor must be off. So this cannot be my operating point because in this, in, for this value, the transistor is off, is not on. While for amplification, I need a transistor to be on and in the saturation stage, as I assume. So this is the, this is the one I'm going to be taking here for VGS. VGS equal to minus 0.5 volts. Now that VGS is equal to minus 0.5 volts, I can go back to the equation governing IDS and VGS and find the corresponding IDS. You get it to be equal to 0.25 milliampere. You can find VDS. VDS, as we agreed, is equal to um, uh, 12, which is the source voltage, minus IDS multiplied by RD, minus IDS multiplied by R, R source. Um, this is simply given from the external loop that we have. If you do that, you get that uh, VDS equal to 4.75 volts, and this indeed what is required for saturation, because for saturation, VDS must be way higher than VGS, which is the case here that you have, and I gave you the exact expression for that in the lectures, it's not used in the book of Floyd, but here the assumption of saturation does hold. So now we finish the first part, we know, we know VDS at the operating point, we know IDS at the operating point, we know VGS at the operating point, we are all set to find the gain, we find the transconductance GM, and we can build a small AC circuit. So I'll first build a small AC circuit, and then the last thing I'm going to be using the, the GM at the end. So here, you can see to the right, I, I used my, this is my AC circuit. In the AC circuit, all capacitors are short circuit. And I removed the, the, the battery voltage, because I'm not interested to find the total voltages. I'm only interested to find the small signal changes. So this is how the circuit looks like. So you can see now the load resistance is in parallel with this drain resistance because the drain now is grounded and this is the load resistance connected to ground. One other thing, this resistance which was connected to the source has been shorted out by the capacitor. This one here is already connected to the capacitor. So now we have some input voltage and this input voltage has an input resistance of 1K and it's connected when we have this one mega ohm here. So what I'm going to be doing, I'll try to replace the circuit to the left. I will replace this one, but it's seven equivalent. Of course, I have one mega ohm in parallel with 1K, so it's very close uh, to the 1K value. This effectively represents real open circuit, does not really affect the result that much. And the most of the voltage, input voltage, will appear across the one mega ohm. So this means that most of the voltage here will be transferred to the gate. This is a good thing. Uh, so, and now that the source is, is grounded for AC, so this, this most of the input voltage will be transferred to the gate because this one mega ohm is way higher than one kilo ohm. And this means that the voltage is effectively very close to this VS. And of course, we're gonna replace the transistor by its small signal model, the one with a current source at the input. So now, after we simplify things, this is how now the circuit looks like. I, I, I bought the, the 2.7 kilo ohm, which was the drain resistance in parallel with the load resistance, okay? So this is where I get my output from. The resistance here has been shorted by the capacitor that we had here. And I'm going to replace all this part by the Thevenin equivalent. If you do that, it's not that difficult to see that most of the voltage appears across this this resistance, so V7 is effectively 0.999 Vs, this one mega ohm, this one kilo ohm, so most of the voltage will appear here. Looking into this side, the resistance seen is this one in parallel with this one, and of course when we have two battery resistances, the smallest one will dominate, and uh, so effectively the M7 resistance is this one here. It's very close, 999 ohm. So this is how the circuit looks like after simplification. 2.7 kilo ohm in parallel with um, this is actually 27 kilo ohm. This 27 kilo ohm in parallel with 100 kilo ohm will give you 21.3 kilo ohm. You can do the calculation and verify that. 
And here, this is how the circuit looks like. Uh, 999 Thevenin resistance in series was a voltage source of value 0.999 of the applied AC signal. Okay. Now the next step is we are going to replace this trans this transistor here. This transistor that you can see here, I'm going to be replacing it. This transistor that you can see here by its small signal model. This is a small signal model. This one um, uh, is a small signal model for this type of transistor for any channel JFET transistor. It's a simplified one, so you see between the gate and the source, you see open circuit because indeed the resistance seen between here and here is open circuit. There's no current drawn. But whatever voltage you apply here, any small changes you apply here will result in small changes in the drain to source current. So the current will be changed. So this change is represented by this current source, GMVGS. And I here ignore the, the output resistance. There should be another output resistance, but I ignore that because it's, it's pretty high because the, 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 current, the, the, the current does not change that much with the uh, VGS if VGS is constant. Okay? So now the next step is remove this transistor from here and replace it with this equivalent circuit. Remember, we are now analyzing for the small signal changes. It's not DC. DC was removed. So if you do that, this is how the circuit now looks like. I replace the transistor by its small signal model. And if it's not that difficult to see that the output voltage will be equal to this is the polarity of the output voltage, while this is the direction of the current. The output voltage minus GM VGS multiplied by this total resistance, which is 21.3K. And uh, this this VGS, the voltage that I see here, is the same as this one because it's open circuit, which is 0.999, the value of the AC signal. So this is what I did here. Now we can get the ratio between the output voltage and the source of voltage. You can see the ratio is 0.99 GMRT, R total. And the R total, if you remember, it is a barrel combination between the drain resistance and the load resistance. Now we are ready to use GM. GM is just a number. We can find it from our DC bias points, but this will give us the total, uh, the total uh, gain of this transistor. I gave you in a previous lecture this expression for GM. The GM is equal to the GM value at zero uh, bias multiplied by this expression. And this is the value of GM at zero bias. I have all these numbers. I know what's VGS off. I know what's my VGF, VGS minus 0.5 volts. VG, VGS off is minus one volts. I know IDSS is one milliampere. Everything here is ready. So once you have that, you get the GM is equal to one milliampere per volt. Okay, now we go back and substitute for the expression for the gain to determine the value of the gain. Now, if you substitute this expression, this is one here is 1 milliampere per volt. This one here is 21.3 kilo ohm. This is 0.99. You see that this transistor gives you a gain of minus 21.3 um, uh, as a ratio between the output and the source of voltage. If you apply a signal of amplitude of 1 millivolt, what you're going to be getting at the output is an amplified version, amplified 21.3 times with a, with a phase inversion. There is a phase inversion between the input and the output. The same steps I have done for the JFET transistor can be done as well for the eMOSFET common source amplifier. I'm, I will show you more examples about that in the tutorials, but exactly the same concept. Um, this is again, this is a transistor here. We can bias it through this voltage divider here. Doesn't matter, we determine some operating point. But when we determine the operating point, all these capacitors are open circuit. But this operating this this capacitor or this operating point helps us determine what will be the value of VGS, what will be the value of VDS, and the slope of that line, the slope of that line it is what determines what is the gain. Because this is what relates any small changes that you will have in V in VGS to the corresponding small changes in IDS. Okay? Of course, if you apply here a small signal at the gate side, this if you do that, if you have a small signal being applied here. This small signal will result in a small oscillations in IDS as well. But remember, when IDS goes up, this means that the drain voltage drain voltage goes down. So the output, the output will be a, an amplified version of, if this is VGS, this will be VDS. Okay? You follow exactly the same step. First, solve for DC, 
DC, determine your operating point, determine the slope of this line, which is really GM. Once you have that, build an AC circuit. This will be short circuit. This is short circuit, so this resistance is gone. This short circuit, so the input signal is connected. This is now grounded, okay? And then replace this transistor by its equivalent AC circuit. And then do the analysis to determine the gain. And we'll be talking more about that in, 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 in the tutorials and the, in the next lecture.